Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. President Trump took to Twitter just now and rant that has Washington on fire. President Trump took to Twitter this morning to talk about health care. He says that he has totally fixed it. This is amazing. It's gonna lower the costs of health care by a mile. CNBC reported that two large insurance companies, Centene and Anthem saw a huge stock nosedive after Trump's announcement. Trump signed a deal that will let small businesses get together to purchase health insurance through health plans. The media is saying that this will destabilize the Obamacare market because cheaper alternatives will become available. There are now 18 states threatening a lawsuit against the president to stop him from stopping the payments. Share this if you stand with our president as he works his butt off to make our health care better. Amen. NFL star vows to quit if forced to stand for anthem, then Trump Jr. throws hard right hook. NFL star Rashard Matthews plays for the Tennessee Titans. He sent a very silly tweet the other day. In a nutshell, Matthews said he'd quit football if he were forced, yes, forced, to stand for the Star Spangled Banner. Here's the scoop, for Daily Mail. According to since deleted tweets, Matthews was asked if he would stand or remain in the locker room if the NFL made rules preventing players from protesting. No I will be done playing football, Matthews wrote in a tweet, which was captured by NFL blogger Paul Kuha Ersky. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell previously announced that league owners will meet next week to address player protests, which is something President Donald Trump has implored the league to do for over a month. Matthews had not been among the NFL players who have protested police violence against minorities by sitting or kneeling during the anthem. However, that changed after Trump referred to protesting players as Sons of B during a speech in Alabama back in September. Since then, Matthews has remained in the locker room during the national anthem. No way would Matthews follow through on his word. Lives aren't known for keeping their words. He also would be dumb to walk away from millions of dollars just to make a point. Matthews later backtracked, per Yahoo Sports. Titans wide receiver Rashard Matthews won't actually quit if NFL owners make a rule requiring players to stand for the national anthem as he threatened in a tweet earlier this week. But he also vows to continue his stand, so to speak, against oppression and social injustice. Not right now, Matthews said, via Paul Kuha Ersky of PaulKuhaErski.com, when asked if he was serious about retiring. Let's hope it doesn't get to that. I know the owners have got a meeting next weekend, so hopefully it won't get to that. Sometimes people, as you all know, tweet some ignorant things out at some moments, and that was an ignorant thing I tweeted out at that given moment. I take full responsibility. That's why it went down, was deleted, but somebody caught me with a screenshot. HT, Gateway Pundit Just in first Weinstein, now a second big-time Hollywood Democrat busted for sex abuse. Hollywood mega-producer Harvey Weinstein is in Arizona at the moment, hiding from his devastating sexual harassment scandal. Three women have accused Weinstein of rape. So far, many many others have accused him of inappropriate touching. Now it looks like Weinstein isn't the only progressive bigwig in show business with a very, very, very bad history. We're talking about platoon director and legendary filmmaker, Oliver Stone. He's being accused of sexual harassment by a Playboy playmate. From New York Daily News While Oliver Stone defended Harvey Weinstein amid more than a dozen allegations of sexual harassment and assault, a former Playboy playmate accused the platoon director of sexual assault. Carrie Stevens, 
who was best known as Playboy's Playmate of the Month in June 1997 but also had several small movie and TV roles, claimed Thursday that Stone had grabbed her breast at a party. The 48-year-old model told the Daily News that she was at a party at producer Ted Field's home in honor of Stone more than 20 years ago when Stone walked up to her standing by the front door. He was really cocky, had this big grin on his face like he was going to get away with something. Stevens, who was 22 at the time, told the news. More on Stone, who is now defending Weinstein, from BizPack Review. I believe a man shouldn't be condemned by a vigilante system. It's not easy what he's going through, either, Stone, said. During that period he was a rival. I never did business with him and didn't really know him. I've heard horror stories on everyone in the business, so I'm not going to comment on gossip. I'll wait and see, which is the right thing to do." He later went on Facebook to walk back his comments, saying that he was traveling and didn't know all of the accusations against Weinstein. I've been traveling for the last couple of days and wasn't aware of all the women who came out to support the original story in the New York Times. After looking at what has been reported in many publications over the last couple of days, I'm appalled and commend the courage of the women who've stepped forward to report sexual abuse or rape. I'll therefore recuse myself from the Guantanamo series as long as the Weinstein Company is involved. Susan Rice's outrageous two-letter response to Trump's Iran comments proved Trump was totally right. President Trump made some major moves against Iran on Friday, refusing to certify the Islamic Republic's compliance with the 2015 Iran nuclear deal and putting sanctions on the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. These latest developments were praised widely on the right. The American Israel Public Affairs Committee IPAC, a major pro-Israel lobbying group, tweeted out their support for the president saying that his speech accurately outlined the history and continued dangers of Iran's aggression. This apparently didn't sit well with Obama's national security adviser Susan Rice, who is currently suspected of unlawfully unmasking people on the Trump team during the 2016 election. B.S., how clever! Coming from the woman who said that the Benghazi massacre was caused by a YouTube video, I'd say this is yet another indication that President Trump is heading in the right direction in terms of foreign policy. But that's not all, former Secretary of State John Kerry, who helped build the Iran deal and is known for trying and utterly failing to bring peace between Israel and Palestine during his tenure, said this of the president's speech. I strongly hope that the other six signatories will prove to the world what responsible behavior is, and adhere to this agreement, no matter what false accusations and contrived provocations are put forward by President Trump. President Trump definitely seems like he's getting the right kind of critics. Share this out to show Rice and Kerry that you think President Trump is on the right track. H.T. The Hill After attacking Trump for months, Jimmy Kimmel just got slapped with worse news ever. Supposed comedian Jimmy Kimmel is not very funny. Recently, he even forgot to tell any jokes about movie mogul Harvey Reinstein. He even defended the fact that he hasn't been covering the scandal at all by saying that he was never the moral conscience of America. Kimmel then continued by saying that Weinstein was not a friend and that he had nothing to do with him despite the fact that many of Hollywood's biggest stars have ties to Weinstein. And I'll add that that story came out like I think moments before we went to tape on Thursday and we didn't have a show on Friday, Kimmel said. They're saying that I'm calling myself the moral conscience of America, which I most certainly never did and most certainly never would, he added. Kimmel then attacked Donald Trump's son, Donald Jr., and said that. Next time you're defending your father and you think it's a good idea to draw a comparison between him and a freshly accused sexual predator, don't," Kimmel said of Trump Jr. before he made the joke about Weinstein. It doesn't help. Yeah right. Silly Kimmel. Kimmel recently took on the gun control crusade after the deadly shooting in Las Vegas, according to Breitbart. 
Share this if you are tired of entertainers in politics. Jimmy Kimmel ain't funny. Describe him in two words below, y'all. The four words this wounded vet said when he heard Trump's Iran decision left the room in tears. President Trump struck a major blow against the 2015 Iran nuclear deal on Friday, decertifying Iran's compliance with the deal and warning that he could withdraw from it entirely if Iran continues to act belligerently. As predicted, many on the left criticized the president's address and actions, but one veteran got on Fox News Friday to defend him. Retired Staff Sergeant Robert Bartlett, who currently serves as an advisor with United Against Nuclear Iran, was badly injured by an Iranian bomb while serving in Iraq. When he was asked about President Trump's decision, he said something awesome. That's great to see that the American president is for the military. You know, President Barack Obama knew that at least 500 military members had been killed under the influence or hands of Iranians coming into Iraq. He continued to praise President Trump. And here this president is rolling back some of those bad policies that were basically going to get more Americans killed in the future. So, for me, it's a great day. It's a great day for Sergeant Bartlett, and it's a great day for the American people. Share it out if you agree. H.T. Fox News